Hello, brilliant financial management students. Steve Willis here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pass your upcoming FM exam. We're going to do question Oscar from the September, December 2018 exam. We're going to do part A, the numerical part, the working capital management challenge. I'm going to show you the exam technique. I'll show you some spreadsheet tips and I'll show you some tricks that are not in the model solution. So let's get started, guys. Guys, I have the question opened in PDF from the past exams. We're going to do this, though, in the practice platform. We can use a blank workspace to do any question that we want. So we're going to do part A. We're going to do the calculation part. Okay. So we're going to calculate costs and benefits of each option. And then we're going to make sure we give a comment. That would be the easiest mark in this. Okay. So guys, pause the video in a moment. Go through the question. Okay. Do option one, do option two, and then Come back here and we will compare our work. Welcome back, friends. You did some reading. You did some planning. You got organized. You tried this at home. Let me show you how I would do it. Well, we've got two options. So let's make a place for option one. Let's make a place for option two. Now, when you read those options, it probably became apparent to you that a lot of the items are the same. A lot of the costs are the same. So we can use the same row items for both columns. And what do we see? In both cases, we are going to have a service fee. In both cases, we're going to get a savings in admin costs. In both cases, we're going to reduce our trade receivables, which means we'll reduce our overdraft and we'll have reduction in overdraft interest. Now, a subtle point, but an important point. In option two, option two is non-recourse. That means that the factor takes the risk of the bad debts, guys. So. In option two, we will have a recovery of the bad debt costs. So that would be the bad debts saved. And last but not least, we will also have an increase in finance cost in option two because the factor is going to say, hey, you've got to now borrow from me instead of the bank if you want this deal. OK, so increase and interest. Those are the items. And now we would do a net for each column. We can get a difference. And let's make a reminder to ourselves not to forget the comment. That would be the easiest mark in this question. All right, let's go through this easy marks first. So the easiest marks to get would be this savings in administration costs, 30,000. Okay, we can put that in both places, can't we? They said it's the same in option one and option two. Moving on, let's do the service fee. In option one, it's going to be 0.5% of sales. In option two, it's 1.5%. So it's going to be 28 million, two, eight, one, two, three, one, two, three, six zeros, multiplied by 0.5%. 0, 0, 0.05, half a percent. I can just copy that formula here and change out the percentage instead of 0 0.05, it's 0 0.15. Let's make sure we make both of these negatives because a service fee is a cost. So I'm going back in, putting a negative sign in front of that percent. Okay, now the reduction in overdraft interest, that's going to take a couple of steps. So I prefer to do things like that as a side working. The marker can follow what you're doing. It's easier for them to check your work. It's easier for the marking team 
to give you the own figure rule. If you make a mathematical error, you will only be punished once. That error would be assumed correct anywhere else you use that figure. But that only works if the markers can follow what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to make a working here. And that's going to be the reduction in OD interest. And how's that going to work? Well, first thing we need, the current trade receivables. Then the factor will reduce it to 30 days. So we will have the, the trade receivable days will drop. That means the trade receivables will drop. New trade receivables. We subtract one from the other. That's the difference or the saving. The difference we'll call that. And last but not least, the savings on interest, that will be the reduction in the interest payment. Because remember, it's the overdraft that funds the re receivables. Okay. So with that, current trade receivables, we can pick up from the question are 5,370,000. New trade receivables, well, we need to use the trade receivable days formula to work backwards. And I'm just going to, to sketch it out in the adjacent cell. So the trade receivable days formula is trade receivables over credit sales multiplied by 365. It's equal to the trade receivable days. Now that I'm looking at that formula, it's easy to work backwards and get to trade receivables. We'll start with the 30 days, and then instead of dividing by sales, we'll multiply by sales, multiply by 28 million, one, two, three, one, two, three, divide by three, six, five. Oops, can't read that. So let's now deploy some tactical formatting to this whole range where we'll be working. There wouldn't be a mark for this, but let's be professional and neat and help ourselves. We can see what we're doing and the marker can see what we're doing. It's win-win for everyone to do a little bit of light formatting. Double click on the column separator to auto enlarge that. And the difference then will be one minus the other. Great, we're going to save, well, we're going to reduce our receivables by 3 million. We're going to recover that cash. Okay, so the savings on interest will be that difference multiplied by 7%, 0 0.07. And we can plug that figure, oops, into both places. And I'll just use the equal sign to make a cell address, save the typing. Okay. So far, so good. Now, an important point, as I mentioned, option two is non-recourse. That means the factor takes the risk of the bad debts. Option one, full recourse. That means we keep the risk of the bad debts. So in option two, we don't have to pay the bad debts. The factor does. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 0.02 multiplied by the credit sales again 28 one two three one two three six zeros okay that's the savings for us now last but not least the factor says we need to borrow from him the factoring company okay at a different interest rate if we want the deal right so that's going to be equal to our new trade receivables, that's the redu reduced trade receivables. If we take the deal, trade receivables will drop to that. Multiplied by 80%, 0 0.8. That's the part that we have to borrow from them. Multiplied by the negative, because it's a cost, 9%, that's how much he's charging us. It's 2% more than the bank, 0 0.07. Okay, that's the incremental cost of doing the deal with the factor. Okay, 
Guys, we're done making quick work of this tricky question here. So the next step is to get the net of each option that's equal to the sum of everything above that sum function. I'll just grab the empty cells there so it will be easier to copy, copy, paste. And which one is better, guys? It looks to me like option two is better. So I'll do the difference will be equal to option two minus option one. And look at this, having a lot of fun, okay? Let's not forget the comment, okay? Both options are beneficial. However, option two is the best where we have a two, four, three, one, seven, eight increase over option one. Guys, there we go. Little cleanup, we could put an underline sign here to show that the Bottom line is a net, no mark for that, just a little polish. And maybe my comment is not as elegantly written as what you see in the model solution, but it doesn't matter if the marking team understands the point you're making, you're gonna get the credit. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Question Oscar, hope you found that useful. Good luck on your upcoming FM exam.